here we are. The prolific Australian garage rock slash psych rock band King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard have already released a brand new album, the first of an alleged five they are planning to release in 2017. Flying Microtonal Banana is an album using microtones as the title may or may not imply. Basically, to explain, a tone is an interval of two notes, for example, C to D. A semitone is an interval of one note, for example, C to C sharp. However, a microtone is an interval even smaller than a semitone, so you start to reach notes a little trickier to get to. And that's what makes this album sound very angular and sour and just bizarre at times, but I like that. It may seem like a gimmicky theme to base a whole album around, but King Gizzard have usually been all about just gimmicks, and have managed to make them pay off in spades. Just check out the infinitely looping Nonagon Infinity, or the solely acoustic based Paper Mache Dream Balloon. I, I also believe the flying microtonal banana is the name of the guitar depicted on the front cover. Honestly, when it comes to this whole microtonal tuning thing, I think it's cool, I think it's awesome. Uh, I like how you'll hear the beginning of a song like Sleep Drifter with descending notes down the scale, and then suddenly you just hear this note that sounds so off, unsettles you a little bit, but not in like, you know, a creepy way, but just it just sort of catches you by surprise a little bit. Also, the band sometimes gets these like bagpipe sounding instruments on the album, like on the track Billabong Valley or the closing track on this album. These moments actually sound very fuzzy and exotic, and it only adds to the eccentricity of the album, and King Gizzard albums tend to be very, very eccentric. Plus the repeating piano chords on Billabong Valley just kind of plinkering throughout the whole track. They were a nice touch and they helped make that track stick out stylistically. Now there are many parts of this album that should have certainly fallen into place to create an album very thrilling and exciting, but I struggle to get that from it. There are certainly energetic tracks on here, um, just, just overall there just seems to be a less exciting buzz from this album, just in terms of tempo and pacing. When it comes to those fast paced tracks they are certainly there, like the track Rattlesnake, probably my favourite one off Flying Microtonal Banana. It's fun, it's ridiculous, it's got a hilarious hook. Rattlesnake! Rattlesnake! And, and most of all, it moves at an exciting pace. Just kicks the album off with something that you can just groove to. But afterwards, you get immediately hit with the track Melting, which slows things down immensely. By no means is it a bad track. In fact, I, I do like the drumming on that track, but it totally breaks apart the energy of the album. And from there on the album, the energy just begins to peak and dip randomly too, and, and not cohesively, like with previous albums there was kind of a transition, or like any change in mood or tempo was kind of done smoothly, but here it, you just kind of hear like gusts of wind before the next track just comes into play. I mean I understand if the band wasn't going for a full on energetic album like Nonagon Infinity, that's totally understandable, and you know I'm not expecting King Gizzard to just do that for every album that they put out. But, so many of these tracks lack some sort of momentum to push them forward. They might have a clever or interesting sound or idea to them, but they just drag on for a while. Throughout the whole thing I was kind of thinking, yeah, th this sounds cool, but it's taking forever. The track Doom City just slows down and speeds up, and, and not cohesively. These changes in tempo on the track just happen abruptly, and it just ends up making the track sound so dreary especially during those slower bits. Actually, that might be it. It's a very dreary album in comparison to what King Gizzard had released before. In this particular case, King Gizzard haven't necessarily made that dreariness work in their favour. This is a good album. I mean, I did like it, but I couldn't find it nearly as exciting as some of the band's previous releases because it's pretty inconsistent. I'm thinking of giving this a 6 out of 10. Sorry.